Today we have with us my cousin, Funk Roberts, fitness coach extraordinaire. Funk, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. First of all, thank you for having me on uh, your show. This is amazing. Family, keep it in the family. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Funk Roberts. I'm a former professional athlete. I actually used to play professional beach volleyball and indoor volleyball for over 15 years um, all over the world. Uh, then I turned a personal trainer, so I did a lot of uh, training in Toronto. I uh, started, you know, I was one of the first people to jump on the uh, boot camps back in the day. Um, so I used to do boot camps with a guy named Ryan Shanahan and then had my own boot camp. And then um, also turned, and then, uh, you know, once the online fitness started, um, I created my own online presence, my own online fitness. So, uh, you know, for, for the last 10 years, I've, I've been online with, uh, you know, Funk Roberts Fitness Inc. I've co-wrote co a uh, Amazon bestselling uh, book. Um, I've been on ABC, NBC, CBS as you know, celebrity trainer. I've, uh, you know, uh, yes, yeah, so I have my own supplement company right there. <laughs> the intro is one of my leading uh, proteins. Um, you know, I've just been, I've just helped millions of people through all over the world from fighters to regular non-fighters to, to men over 40 to women to, to everyone uh, change their lives, change their health through fitness, uh, both online and, um, you know, face to face. So I'm um, excited to be on here. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today, Funk. So, I mean, obviously, we're all spending a lot more time at home these days, and most of the gyms are now closed. I guess all of the gyms are now closed. And it's been a real struggle with, you know, how do you keep up with your workout? So what are some of the things you would recommend for people that are now staying at home in terms of keeping up with their fitness routine? Yeah, I mean, right now, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it two ways. Uh, you can look at it as a, you know, at first when this started, um, it was very tough for people to, to transition from if you were gym people, you went to the gym, to being at home and not really knowing what to do, not really, you know, having a, having a trainer at a gym to help you out. Or, you know, a lot, of t a lot of times people just watch other people do things or, you know, they have their go-to fitness equipment that they like to use. And now with this, with, with everyone being quarantined or isolated or, or gyms being closed, you're at home and you don't know what to do. You know, you kind of start going on Instagram, looking at what these other Instagram influencers or models are doing, but they're not really giving anything. You go to YouTube, but it's just so vast. So um, I, I can see the, a lot of frustration. I can see that there is, um, you know, it could be a time where it's like, man, I don't know what to do. But this is also an amazing opportunity for everyone to get in the best shape of their lives. Like literally, like, you know, I'm starting to see people running more, uh, being walking more. Um, listen, time is not the is not a barrier anymore. You know, one of the biggest <laughs> people used to tell me all the time is, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. And the programs that I that I create now, and a lot of the workouts that I do in the programs that I have are actually home workouts. Because I've been doing that for two, three to two years, two to three years, because I realized that, you know, not a lot of people have time to get to the gym. You know, specifically if I'm, you know, working with men and men and women or men specifically over the age of 40, they don't have time to get to the gym. They've got, you know, work, they've got family, they've got other things to do. So they need ways to, to, to be able to work out at home using either their body weight only or a set of dumbbells to get the job done 20, 30 minutes in and out, you know, being able to do it in their living room. So I, I, I've kind of forced, forced, I didn't foresee this happening, but um, a lot of the people that use my programs are okay because they already know that the workouts are for home. But um, like I said, this is a great opportunity now for people to really embrace health, to embrace exercise, to embrace um, doing things that they may not have, have wanted to do, may not have had time to do. Um, now, now time is not a barrier. So this is a perfect <laughs> start, like, you know, um, looking into more, you know, body weight workouts. I mean, I've been doing body weight workouts, you know, since the beginning, really like 20, 20, 30 years, even as an athlete, you know, body weight, working out with my body weight was, uh, was, was major. And for a lot of athletes, that is because we use our bodies, but as you're getting older, you know, you want to get to the gym, you want to lift heavy, you want to, you know build, you know, use all these big weights, you want to get on the treadmill and, and, and 
using your own body weight kind of just goes by the wayside. Um, but your own body weight, working out with your own body weight is, is, is ideal, specifically because when you're doing movements with your own body weight, you're using so many different muscles. You're using all the little tiny muscles, the stabilizers that you would never use before. And in fact, a lot of people find, you know, there's different levels of obviously of, of working out specifically with your body weight, but a lot of people find using their body weight uh, is tough. Like it's a little bit tougher. They're moving yeah. a little bit differently. You know, you're doing exercise like, man, I didn't realize I, I couldn't do that. Lifting weights is easier. It literally is. You, you know, you can go at your own pace. You can just pick up a weight and you kind of just lift it. You don't even have the right te- uh, technique most of the times. Mm-hmm. Using body weight, you really have to have the right technique. You have to have the right skill. And what that does is it forces your body, forces your muscles, it forces your core to activate. So this is a really good time right now to, like, literally speaking, by the end of, uh, you know, isolation, um, you know, you, you could you could get be going back to work, like, in the best shape of your life. Like, mm-hmm. seriously, it's, it's amazing. But, um, yeah, you know, so right now I think the best thing for most people, to, for everyone to do is start – Start using body weight workouts. Start doing, you know, just simple things, um, simple exercises. I guess we can go into it a little bit, a little bit later. But sure. Um, well, yeah. I was trying to figure out. So, how long and how often would you suggest that people work out for? So, how many days a week? Yeah. You had mentioned sort of 20, 30, 40 minutes. What would you say is sort of the best case scenario for people? Yeah. So, if you were going to do it, let's say you were going to do. So, for most people, I would tell them to do what's called metabolic training, which is like HIIT training, but you can, there's different levels of it, right? When people think about HIIT training, they think about, you know, CrossFit or, or P90X or something that were insanity or something that's like, oh, that's, that's crazy. But you can, do it, you can do different levels of HIIT training and all, or metabolic training. And all that does is you're moving from one exercise to another. So you, maybe you'll do, uh, you'll do squats for 20, 30 seconds then rest for 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Then you do push-ups for 30 seconds and then rest. Then you do another exercise, another exercise. So you may take five exercises, do it in a circuit, and you would do that for, and again, depending on the workout, no more than 30 minutes. No more than 30 minutes. The sweet spot of a workout is is 20 to 30 minutes because that's when our, our hormones, the, the, the good hormones, the hormones that are going to help us um, build some muscle, the hormones going to help us burn, burn fat, that's that sweet spot. If you start going a little bit more, like longer, like into the 40 minutes and 50 minutes and 60 minutes, which I see a lot of people doing, you know, on the, on the treadmill or on the, on the elliptical or what have you, that raises our cortisol levels. And cortisol is a stress hormone. And that's the stress hormone that also causes belly fat, right, and body fat. It causes our body to, to, to store body fat. So we, don't, we need a little bit of cortisol in the morning. We do. As soon as we wake up, we need that cortisol to get us going. But when we have constant cortisol, high stress throughout the day, um, that can sabotage your, your, your health, first of all, just having that much stress, plus it stores fat. So the 30-minute is a beautiful window, and using metabolic training like I just talked about is perfect because what that training does, it allows you to burn calories during but then also after it's done using what's called the afterburn effect or EPOC, there's science behind that. So not only are you going to be working out after, a lot of guys – who do my workouts, they'll be like, funk, man, it's two hours later and I'm still sweating. Like, you know, is this good? I'm like, yes, that's your metabolism, buddy. That's great. That's like, that's what you want. You know, you want your body to continue to burn calories, not just during, but after. So maybe during you'll get 300 calories, 200 calories, maybe 400. And don't trust those calorie counters on the uh, on the treadmills, people, when you're when you're at the gym, because uh, they're they're 99.9 percent wrong. But it's actually the calories that your workout is gonna is gonna help um, afterwards. So mm. yeah. So then I don't think we covered off how many times a week though. Sorry. Right, yeah. So three. So okay. Listen. Let's let's. I want everyone to think that. Okay. Listen. Generally speaking, I would tell you three to four times a week, right? Because we need those recovery days because our bodies need to recover. If we're doing a workout um, on Monday, right? And everything's, we're breaking down muscles because we're doing push-ups or whatever, whatever, what, what other exercises that we're doing, our bodies need to recover the growth day. We've broken down our muscles, right? We've broken down our body. So our body now needs to say, hey, you know what? The Val just did a great body weight workout. We need to recover so that the next time she does this workout, we can be ready for it and she can break us down again. 
So that we need those rest days because those rest days are what I call growth days and what are called the days where your cortisol levels will go down, your body recovers, and then you can come back the next day. But what happens is people get excited. They want to work out every single day. But what's happening is your body never gets a chance to recover. So yeah, that may be good for a couple of weeks. But as you start to continue doing it every day or six days a week or even five days a week, um, you, know, you will start to see injuries, plateaus, um, slow down in your metabolism because you're not giving your body a chance to actually, you know, recover. So your metabolism is like, oh my God, what's going on, man? We're, we got to slow everything down, which is, again, you never want your metabolism to slow down. So you need to, you need to really focus on, on giving yourself rest. Now, the caveat to what I'm about to say. Okay. I do understand that people have a lot of time on their hands. So trying to tell somebody during a time where you're forced at home that you can only work out three days a week, they're like, are you crazy, Funk? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> so the sweet spot is just breaking up the type of workouts you do every day. So can you work out five to six days a week? I wouldn't say working out five to six days a week, but I would do three solid metabolic workouts throughout, throughout the week. Maybe one day go for a nice walk. Maybe another day do some recovery stuff. Maybe some yoga, a really nice, you know, step outside your comfort zone because what yoga is going to do, it's going to help with recovery. It's going to help your muscles um, recover faster, flexibility, which again will keep it sustainable. Listen, it's funny. That was going to be one of my questions. If you could do yoga on one of your off days, one hundred percent yoga. Um, any type of any type of mobility work. You know, this is a perfect time to step outside your comfort zone, right? Start doing things that you've never done before. Start, start, start. Really, really treating your body like a. You know, you hear this. You know, my body is my temple. My body is my shrine. But this is the time. Like we all have time. So go for walks long walks with your mask on or whatever you need to do, you know, a really good way of getting a little bit of, um, you know, just a little longer active, active rest or some exercise three days or three to four days, depending on your age. Cause some younger people can obviously work out a lot more because they recover better, but I'm 51 and the guy and the people I work at work with are, you know, 35, 40, 50, 60, 70 year olds. So I also tell them, you know, I also have them doing something five to six days a week, but it's not, working out all the time it's yoga it's mobility work you know and that sort of thing you can also do ab and core stuff pretty much four to five days five times a, a week as well um, right same exact exercise but you know breaking those those exercises up and adding that ab and core strength so so just to re recap yes the regular three main workouts per week three to four main workouts per week depending on your age but take those two of those other days as a as a active recovery, mobility, uh, yoga, and then Sunday is your rest day. Like you're not doing anything, you're just meal prepping. You're prepping your meals, you're prepping, you're cooking those batched healthy meals so you can get prepared for the week to come. Got it. So as we're on the topic of meals and eating, because in quarantine land, all of a sudden, I know I find I've got a fridge full of food, which is something I never normally have. And all of a sudden I'm like snacking all the time. So can you out train a bad diet? Never, never. So for all of you, that's nice setup. Nice. I'm going to go. <laughs> um, you can't out train a bad diet. For those of you who know um, that saying, you, can, you can't. Like it's like it doesn't matter how many workouts you do. It doesn't matter if you run five kilometers, come home, do a Funk Roberts workout, then you do whatever. If you're eating shitty, excuse me, can I swear on this? No. Yeah, go. it's fine. <laughs> if you're eating unhealthy, then um, you're never going to get results. You're never going to get results. I see it all the time. Like I say, I, I have my Alpha Brotherhood, which are you know two to three thousand men from all over the world to do my workout programs and nutrition. And you know, even the guys who are like in phase six, right? They'll be like, like today, I had a guy who was like, guys, I have a confession to make because he's been killing the workouts. He's had incredible results moving into phase six. But he's having some. He's having a tough time with snacking. So he put a picture of his two enemies on, and there's the yeah. Like this month, I've actually gained a couple of couple of pounds. Yeah. Uh, but he knows, and you know, it's because I haven't been focusing on my nutrition like I was before when I got those results, right? So yeah, you have to really, you know, if you want the abs, if you want to get rid of that stubborn belly fat, you know, for men. The first place, the last place it comes off is the belly. For women, it's usually the hips, the thighs, and the butt. But for men, it's the belly. So it's like 
a lot of guys are like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing everything, I'm eating healthy, but I just can't get rid of the belly fat, you know? Like, I, it, it's so stubborn. I'm like, yeah, you're getting rid of all the fat in everywhere else, which is fine. That's what happens mostly with men. But it's the belly fat that we have to really focus on, and that's the toughest one to get rid of. And on the women's side, the same thing. Those, those tough, you know, the thighs, the legs, the glutes, you know, sometimes it's the hardest one to get rid of, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where nutrition comes in. That's where you need to, to have a balanced meal. Carbs, complex carbs. Yes, people, you need to eat those carbs. Because if you don't eat carbs, your body goes into starvation mode. And when your body goes into starvation mode, it slows down the metabolism, which means your thyroid get, gets affected. It, it grabs that fat and holds it, um, the fat, your fat and holds it and stores it because it doesn't know where it's going to get energy. Guys, carbs is energy, energy for your brain, energy for our body, and it helps us to recover and it helps our metabolism. So when we're not eating good complex carbs, the body goes in starvation mode, holds on to fat and takes the protein, which we all need, and uses it as energy, which we never want. You never want protein as energy. Protein are the building blocks of our bodies and of our muscles and our in the metabolic processes that go through our, um, you know, go on in our body. So we need protein. 100% to feed our body, to feed our recovery. So imagine your body's using it, the protein that you're getting, and now your body's in starvation mode. Of course, you're not going to get results. And yes, people will say, yeah, you know, I'm eating healthy. You know, I eat vegetables and protein, but I don't get results. Like, yeah, you don't get results because you're missing two really important macronutrients. Macros, by the way, are carbs, fats, and proteins. You're missing carbs, complex carbs, you know, like steel cut oats, sweet potato, uh, basmati rice, jasmine rice, brown rice, black rice, you know, um, potatoes after your workout, quinoa, like those are, those should be staples in everyone's diet. Mm. Protein can be, there's an array of protein out there. Um, there's no bad protein. You can get an array of protein. And then of course there's healthy fats like avocados and, and MCT oil and coconut oil. Like, and then of course vegetables and fruits, should always be like number one, a staple. So every plate that you eat should have a source of carbs, fats, proteins, and vegetables for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No more than that. If you're eating three times a, a, a day, that's all you need. So what about snacking? We have a question in the chat about can we eat snacks? You should not be snacking because this is what's going to happen to you. So the body takes a lot of energy and 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 time to digest right so it's a lot of a lot going on when you're eating so now think about you're eating breakfast and your body's starting to digest and then all of a sudden two hours later you're eating something else so now your body's going wait a minute i haven't even finished what i was eating the last time and now you're putting this stress on me so now i gotta do this and then three hours later you're eating again and then three hours those those days of grazing that 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 doesn't that doesn't work anymore. that's old school thinking right? Our bodies need time to digest. Our bodies need time to metabolize. And if you keep putting uh, food into your body, that means that you're going to put what you're going to put a lot of stress. And what is the hormone I just talked about? The stress hormone is cortisol. What happens when you have too much cortisol? You store fat. So what do you do instead? How can you negate snacking in between? You eat enough carbs in the morning at your breakfast, at lunch and at dinner when you have because that, that's what that's what's really forcing you to to to, to snack you're not getting enough energy you're not getting enough carbs during those meals so when you're not getting enough carbs you're probably like well oh, you know what i ate breakfast but you know you may have just had like i don't know like uh i don't know like eggs and eggs and uh and fruit let's say i've seen that a lot eggs and fruit that's my breakfast that's what someone would say to me. And I'd be like, eggs and fruit. Okay, well, first of all, where's the fats and where's the carbs? But okay. And then two hours later, they're like, I'm really hungry, man. I'm like, yeah, of course you're hungry. You didn't eat anything for your breakfast. Like, you gotta, you got to balance out every meal, carbs, fats, proteins, and vegetables or fruits with every single meal, every single smoothie, but three times a day. And again, it, to most people, that's, not, that's like, are you kidding me? How, how can that happen? But like I said, I coach... You know, I've got, I've got a challenge going on right now with 1,600 men from all over the world doing this challenge. And generally speaking, what week one of a challenge, I always have to teach this. So everyone's kind of like, they, they, they're like, eh, I don't know if I should trust Funk. I don't know what's going on. And of course, the same things happen when I keep telling them, you got to eat three meals. And then week two, which is now, as everyone has finally said, okay, I'm going to succumb. I'm going to have three meals a day. I'm going to have carbs. Look what's happening. Well, you can't see, but 
guys are the weight starting to, to, to come off. They have energy like they've never had before. They feel great. The metabolism is going. So you need to eat balanced meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner. So let's talk about the snacking for a second. So I, I get what you're saying, you know, make sure you eat enough carbs at those meals so you don't snack. But sometimes snacking isn't about feeling hungry. It's just about, oh my God, I see something. I want to put it in my mouth. Beautiful. That, I'm so glad you talked about it. Do have any tools for that? That's called intuitive eating. And I love that we talked, that you brought that up because I just taught this last month. So intuitive eating means getting, having a relationship with the food. Right, because that's that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes, every day at you know six o'clock, you you just feel like eating something because that you just snack for the because it's been a habit that's happened. Or every time you sit in front of the TV to watch Tiger King, you you get popcorn, you start eating popcorn. Why? Because it's just every time you sit down, that's what happens. Right. So you're not even hungry. You're, it's just a habit. And there's, exactly. a lot of, there's a lot of other reasons why people eat too. Maybe stress, maybe because they're angry, maybe because they're bored, maybe because they're tired. So there's so many reasons why people snack. But you need to, if you start to understand why you're doing this or start to bring to light what's going on. So for instance, what I always ask my guys to do and, and women too, I say, um, ask yourself if you're hungry, right? Am I hungry? Like before, like give it some time. Oh, I'm about to eat. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I hungry? Well, why am I eating this right now? Why am I having whatever that snack is? And then you'll start to think, oh, well, maybe because I'm tired. Am I tired? Am I angry? No. Am I, oh, is this the time? Oh, geez, this is 4.30. This is the time I always have this snack. Okay, so I'm actually not, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a drink of water. <laughs> it's going to satiate me. And then I'm going to sit here for a second and realize, you know what? I don't need that. I don't need that. And it takes time. It honestly does. It's not something that happens like that. But once you do start to realize why you're snacking, then you, you have a choice. You can say, you know what? I'm not going to snack. Or you can say, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to snack. But now it's your, in your power. It's not like you're just grabbing something. It's actually like you're actually making the decision, which means you will take over the power. What's happening right now is the food has power over you because of your emotions or because of your habits. And you don't ever want that. You want to take control. So if you do end up snacking or cheating or whatever, that's because you decided. You know that you're taking that and you know that you're putting it into your, 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 your mouth. So um, you know, intuitive eating, emotional eating, like you know, even, even asking yourself, you know, am I hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. Okay, I'm hungry. So let me have this snack. So you have the snack. As you're eating, you're eating, you're, you're taking your time, you're eating the food. And then after you always ask yourself, how did that make me feel? Did that mm -hmm. give me energy? Am I bloated? Um, do I feel crappy? Do I have to go to the washroom? You know, the, all of those questions, you'll understand. I'm like, you know what? That food, every time I eat that food, it makes me feel like crap. I don't want to feel like crap. So I'm not going to eat that food anymore. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that, that, that can go on just by asking yourself a few questions before you before you snack or eat that that or just your regular meal mm -hmm. um, or um after too like how did that make me feel did i feel great that i ate the popcorn do i feel great that i ate the, the cheetos no i felt gross and my body feels gross and i'm bloated and tomorrow i've got inflammation and you know now i'm sore on my my shoulder because i'm inflamed so you know what i'm not gonna eat cheetos because i don't want to feel that way so right. When you start having those conversations, it makes a massive difference. And like I said, guys, this, men and women out there, it's not going to be overnight, but you do have to start taking control over right. the foods that you're putting into your body so that you can take control of your immune system and your health, specifically during these times. Got it. That makes sense. Let's talk a little bit about some of the types of workouts. So, uh, for example, I hate burpees. Are, are they really that beneficial in a workout to do burpees? Uh, sure. I mean, I'm going to say it because I love burpees. Once again, <laughs> you are an incredible, I want you at the, my home run derby. <laughs> Next time I want you pitching to me. Um, I, I like burpees, but not everyone likes burpees, but it's just an incredible full body exercise. And there's different variations too. There's, you know, I've created over two, not created, but I had a program with over 250 variations. Yeah, but it's just a good it's just a good exercise. But do you have to do burpees? Absolutely not. You don't have to do burpees. You know, like I said, uh, yeah, you don't have to do burpees. Well, like I said, one really great way to uh, to exercise or doing like a circuit. You know, five to six exercises, one after the other. You know, maybe forty seconds of the exercise, twenty seconds rest. So you don't want to rest too much. You still want to have that heart rate going. 
and then follow by the next exercise, next exercise, and next exercise, and try to try to create a workout that has its total body, right? So you're you're oh. you're, you're hitting your upper body, your lower body, what have you. You can also, um, you know, do so. And there's so many different ways to set those up. You can do ladder. Yeah. You can do you know uh, every minute on the minute where you do a set set of exercises on every minute. You can do um, you know do four or five exercises for three to four reps each for keep going on and on for like, you know, 15 or 20 minutes. Um, there's so many different ways to set up a workout. Yep. You can also add in dumbbells because, um, you know, again, some of us are, are, are blessed enough to have um, weights at home or to have yep. a home gym, which that's the other thing I uh, started when guys come to my program, I always start them right away. I start saying, okay, guys, it's time. we're going to build our home gym so that if anything happens, you have you can exercise at home. And it's yeah. so funny because there are a few outliers in my program that are like, yeah, you know what? I don't have dumbbells. I'm like, how do you not have dumbbells? Like this whole program is body weight and dumbbells. It's like, oh, because I was using the gym in my, uh, in my condo. And I'm like, ah, oh, well. I guess you better go to Amazon and order some dumbbells. Well, that was going to be my next question, actually. So right now, if people do want to have equipment, you would recommend going to Amazon and ordering oh, what? One million percent. Bells, so. bands, kettlebells. Yeah. But see, what, if, if someone's just starting out and they need like that one thing, yeah. oh, oh. An idea, what would you say is that one thing or one piece of equipment that yeah. they should order from Amazon? It would be dumbbells right now because uh, I would have told you kettlebells, but kettlebells are, there's actually a shortage in kettlebells right now. And I'm not even joking. You can't get really? them. Really? Yes. You cannot get them anywhere. So if you have kettlebells at home right now. Yes, I do. I got a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're like, it's, it's impossible, like literally really? impossible to get kettlebells right now. You can order them, but yeah. you're going to be on a wait list. Um, and the reason why is because kettlebells are one of the best, like it's like that piece of equipment when someone asks, Ask me, what is your number one piece of equipment? Like, if you were on an island, what piece of equipment would you bring? And I would say, oh, a kettlebell. One kettlebell. That's all you need. Uh, you know, my wife and I, Angela, are just starting a new kettlebell uh, program, a new kettlebell membership using one kettlebell. So uh, all the workouts, all you need is one kettlebell, and it's like a whole year of workouts. But, like, that's, that's definitely the one. But, unfortunately, there's a, there's a shortage. So what's next? Wow. Really a dumbbell. I would say getting a pair of dumbbells. It's very easy, you know. Um, Bowflex has those, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if you can see those, but I'm just pointing to my – sorry about the message. Yeah. Those, those dumbbells go from, like, 2 pounds to 52 pounds. So, again, once, when guys come into my program, I always say, guys, I know it's a little bit expensive. It's, like, 200 or $300, 200 bucks or whatever. But you're getting, like – from two pounds to 52 pounds and they're very they're just adjustable so you just adjust them you pull them out and they're very and they fit perfectly it's just two little you know it's not a whole rack of dumbbells and that's yeah. great because then not only are you working on because again you have to build muscle too this is not just about you know losing weight it's about building muscle because the more muscle you have, the leaner you're going to be, the less fat you're going to have, and the more metabolic you're going to have. So the more, and I'm not talking about getting big and ripped and like big and muscular like Arnold Schwarzenegger and those, those guys. I'm talking about just being lean and, musc and having muscle. And yeah. again, as we get older, both men and women, you know, we suffer from sarcopenia. With sarcopenia, it's a natural loss of muscle due to aging and we do not want and so that's what's naturally happening so that's why you know a lot of people suffer from bone um you know weak bones osteoporosis you know your muscles start to weaken if you're not using them so you need to not only try to you know uh you know lose that lose the body fat but you also have to build lean muscle and again i'm not talking about going in and doing buys and tries but yeah. it's implementing resistance training using dumbbells into your training using body weight um you know a, a combination and, and what about bands we've got a question in the chat about bands those yeah. exercise bands absolutely so once again um i'm just pulling out my man dave schmitz uh he has these uh actually he's got a whole kit rbt Go to resistancebandtraining.com. Um, I'm not getting anything out of this one, but uh, go to this one because I love this guy. So he's got different bands, right? He has a whole slew of bands that you can get all different resistance uh, sizes. And, and, and he also has um, what do you call the handles as well. But yeah, yeah. Bands are great. You know, like once, if you have the right band workout program, he has a good workout program. 
we're going to be developing a workout program with bands as well. Um, that's a great one. That's perfect because awesome. bands are good for not just, um, you know, at home, but like after this pandemic is over, when travel starts to open up, it's a perfect uh, to bring on your travel so you can do some resistance training in your room while you use body weight and bands. So bands are great. I would go dumbbells, bands, you can't get kettlebells, but dumbbells, bands, and kettlebells. That's really it. I think those three is all you need because you should be using your body weight, um, you know, and then adding so, some dumbbells into the mix and or, yeah. or resistance bands. Interesting. So we've got another question in the chat about alcohol. Ooh. Now, I know that you're not a big drinker, but somebody does have a question about, you know, where no, no, these are all questions. And, yeah, um, during the program. So, yeah, man, as you, you know, man or woman, alcohol um, is uh, a disaster, really. Now, I mean, if you want to sabotage your results, then just drink alcohol. You know, for men, it's, it's specifically beer is going to kill you. Why? Because it, it increases estrogen. Okay, I talked about cortisol being one of our enemies. Estrogen, specifically for men, is even more of, a, of, a, of an enemy, specifically to our testosterone. So you're drinking um, beer. Beers, uh, you know, increase your, your estrogen. Estrogen causes belly fat and those man boobs, right? It causes man boobs and belly fat. The more estrogen you have, again, we need a little bit of estrogen, but not a lot, and not what causes. Um, all that belly fat storage and that estrogen, um, you know, uh, too much estrogen. So um, what I, this is what I tell everybody. I say, listen, and women too, women on the other side, drinking wine and all of that stuff is going to, you know, like you, you, you already know, I don't even have to tell you that when you're drinking wine and you're not getting, re and you're going to the gym and you're still not getting results, you know, you know, the culprit, you absolutely know. Um, so what about vodka soda, for example? No, no alcohol, like period. It doesn't matter. There's no good alcohol. There's no, no magic pill. Yes, they're going to market to you to tell you that, oh, yeah, drink this one because it doesn't have calories or doesn't have this or that. But what it does to your hormones and your body and how it will sabotage your results, uh, you know, getting, getting whatever results you're looking for, it's not worth it. Now, don't – let me just – let me just uh, – give me two more seconds here. This is what I tell people. I say get to your goal first. Right. If, 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 you know, whenever someone does one of my challenges or what have you, there's no drinking month number one. And generally like in the 30 day challenge, I'm like, don't, don't drink. We just don't, we want to get rid of all the toxins in our body. So you're not right. going to have alcohol. And then by the end of that month, seldom do, again, I'm working with men in their forties, fifties, sixties, who I always preach that. Listen, we drank when we were twenties and thirties. There's no reason to be like using alcohol as a crutch now. Um, it's more about being social with who you are with. It's more about enjoying the, you know, the, the, the people you're with and not putting the focus on the alcohol. Because a lot of people say, oh, no, I got to get a couple of drinks. Oh, yeah, let's, let's start off with a couple of drinks. But that's not why you're there. You're not there for the alcohol. You're there for the people, for, the, for who you're there with, right? The, your family or what have you. That should be the number one focus. So right. um, when you're younger, go nuts, man. Because, you're, again, and again, when we're older, we can't recover. Like, I guess, I don't know about you guys, but I know the last time I drank was which was years ago, it took me days to get over. Whereas before, I could drink every day. I, could, I, was, I would go crazy and drink and party like crazy and just get up next morning, go to work, right, in my 20s and 30s. It's, that's not even a – that, days. And you guys know, you're just like, man, it's like three days later. I'm still feeling it, right? Right. Why do you want to even feel that way? Was it even worth it? Just enjoy the company you're with. But, okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to – you know. <laughs> Not drinking i know there's going to be people drinking so all i say is get to your goal first get to that goal get to because you're gonna you're gonna learn how it feels not to drink and how your body feels and then you can slowly in, you know implement like your vodka sodas you know the, the the alcohol that's not gonna cause too much damage because it's all gonna cause damage uh, again doesn't matter what they're marketing to you you can put whatever you want in the chat oh i know this one doesn't have this and that <laughs> as well as i do and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, yeah, you can drink a little bit. That's not me. So, like, if you're, doing anything, you're not drinking at the beginning until you reach your goal. Get to that goal. Get to how you, where you feel good, where your immune's good, where you feel healthy, where you're happy with your, with what your, with your look, um, where you're happy with, with yourself. And then you can start implementing it in. But I guarantee you're not going to be drinking as much as, as you want because you're going to see this, the side effects that it has, not just on your body. But just right. the mood on the way you feel and, uh, you know, how it hits you um, from the inside as well. Got it. No, that makes a lot of sense for sure. Good question. 
So some of the workouts that we talked about, are those the same workouts that beginners and advanced people can do? One million percent, yes. Yeah, so you would just, you would just, so if you were a beginner, so let's say an advanced person, so let's say, let's go back to the five exercises, right? We have five exercises, you know, squats, push-ups, lunges, burpees, uh, you know, and maybe plank. like- Plank. Uh, uh, yeah, plank or bicycle, yeah. So like, if you had those five exercises, you would do them in a circuit. Um, a beginner would do 30 seconds of work. So 30 seconds of the, of the squat, as, good, as fast as they can or as slow as they can, just move with a 30 second break. And then move to the next exercise for 30 seconds and a 30 second break. And then once you've done all five exercises, you rest for a minute and you would do that maybe two more times. So you have a total of three rounds, 15 minutes. And again, you're moving at your speed, right? Um, because now all you're doing right now as a beginner is you're just training your body and your muscles to move and to squat, to lunge, to do push-ups, just getting that strength. If you are in advance, you could take those same five exercises. You, and if you're advanced, you may not only take the same five exercises, but you may change the variation. You may do jumping squats. You may do, you know, side-to-side push-ups or, or dive bombers. You may do jumping lunges or a different lunge variation, you know, but you would do 60 seconds of work and 15 seconds rest, right? Or 45 seconds of work and 15 seconds rest, one after the other. And you may do, instead of doing three rounds, you may do five rounds, right? So everyone could take those same. So if you and your wife or you and your husband are together and your husband is, um, you know, he's just getting back into to, uh, to working out, but you, you're, you're in great shape or, you know, you're in good shape. You can still do the same five exercises, except while your husband's doing uh, uh, squats, you can do jump squats. You know what right. I mean? And you can change up the, you know, you can change up the, or you could still both do like 45 seconds. It's just your husband's going to be slower and do right. the best he can. And you're just going to be going crazy and do the best you can. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's just, again, you can, you can do the same type of workout, but you would yeah. just change the time. Okay, we have another question here in the chat about uh, cigar smoking, saying that cigar smoking is on the rise. So what are your thoughts about cigar smoking, Funk? Well, um, do I really have to answer that question? Lungs, baby, <laughs> lungs! <laughs> COVID is killing our lungs, man! It's killing our immune system. You don't want to do things that, that are going to hurt your immune system. You want to stay as healthy as possible, specifically during this time. Um, as I mentioned when we started, it's a great question because, as you can see, I've got a cigar right there a nice little humidor right there oh i don't smoke them i just have a ton of cigars because i used to smoke cigars and uh, in <laughs> fact i did used to smoke cigars until um i had a what's called crypto organizing pneumonia which i had a lung disorder that almost killed me literally i was i was nice. on my deathbed in the hospital so um so you know like i have to be very careful with with uh, even even while i was in great shape um that's something that i that i that i got so um you know, anything that affects our lungs, specifically during these times, like this is the time, like I mentioned before, that you really want to focus on your health. You want to do everything you can. Capitalize on the fact that you're home. Capitalize on the fact that you can learn. Like this is a time to learn a lot about health, a lot about fitness, you know, try new, new programs, um, experiment with your nutrition, try some yoga, but really try to cleanse the body and clean out that body of, of the toxins that, that are going to kill your immune system because right now we need to do everything we can to strengthen our immune system not just for ourselves but for our families because yes if you you know contact or or, or get uh, you know COVID-19 or what have you and yeah sure it may be great for you you may be able to get through it but it's all the other people around you right um, but also you never know like you never know I'm 51 man I'm in that sweet spot so I have to even though I'm in uh, you know I'm in great shape and probably in the best shape I've been in in 10 20 10 to 20 years I'm still very, I don't take my health at all for granted. I'm like, I still, I gotta, I gotta take, I gotta step it up to the next level now because I really have right. to make sure that my lungs are healthy. So I know, so listen, I get it. There's a lot of time on our, on our hands, right? And, and it's easy for me to say that, it, you know, this is a perfect time to, well, it, it's, it, this is a perfect time. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it to get, to be healthy. But right. I, I'm, my value, I value health more than anything like my wife and i when we got married our vows was about health like making sure that we both stay healthy we are both fit for the rest of our lives not everyone values health as their number one thing some people value money more some people value 
picking up chicks or guys. Some people value their, their job. Some people value their family, their, their daughters, their, their, their kids. But you can't, you can't be at your best with whatever you value the most if you're unhealthy. If you're always getting sick, if you're out of shape, if you're, if you're, if you're unattractive because you're trying to pick up women or men, you know, like you, the underlying thing for you to enjoy whatever you value the most is health. So no matter what you have to focus on your health, can you have a cigar once a week after a good week of, of, of training and eating? Sure. Go for it. I'm not going to tell you not to, but you know, you know, lighting up every day. That's just, it's just, no, it's plan. yeah, it's not a plan. Do you believe in cheat days for dieting? Definitely don't believe in cheat days at all because what happens when you do a cheat day, it will compound into cheat days. It's very tough to get past the cheat day because it's yeah. <laughs> all right. So what you want to do is um, you want to have cheat meals because I do think that cheat meals are great and you want to have planned cheat meals. This is very, very important. Listen up people. You want to, at the beginning of every month, you want to plan four cheat meals per month, okay? So you know that throughout the month, I'm going to eat great. I'm going to have the carbs, fats, proteins, and vegetables, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'm going to have a lot of energy. But you know what? There's going to be four times this month I'm going to cheat. I'm going to have a cheat meal. One is going to be when I take my spouse out for, uh, for a meal. Or when we have a special, now you can't really go out for meals, so you're going to have a special meal. Maybe you order in, you have your special meal with your spouse where you can spend some time together and both have a great cheat meal. With And I don't call them cheat meals, I call them guilt-free. Because this is a guilt-free meal. I don't want you to think of it as cheating. I want you to think of it, that is, of it as it's guilt-free. You're, you earned it, you can have it, and you plan for it. So that's number one. Whatever Something with your spouse or with a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, or friends. Number two, um, a celebration, because there's always celebrations going on. There's always a wedding, there's always a birthday, there's always Carl's, you know, uh, 50th, um, you know, reunion, there's always, there's always, there's always, there's always, there's always, right? there's always, there's always a holiday. So save one for, for something that's coming up throughout that month. Oh, it's so-and-so's wedding or so-and-so's what bar mitzvah, whatever it is. Let me, let me, let me, uh, let me save one. The third one is, um, something for yourself, you know, something for you, you know, you know what I mean? Like this is my, Oh, and, and sorry, I'm going to back up that, that celebration one too, like that, yeah. that um, could also be like, and again, I know it's different now because we're all inside, but generally speaking, there are times where maybe you go out with your friends, right? You go out for a night, you go with your friends, um, you know, you get, you go out with your buddies. So that would be that. The third one is something for you, just for you, your own, your own vice, that meal that you like, that meal that you love that, you know, usually you're like, hiding or you don't tell anybody now you can be guilt-free because you planned for it and the fourth one is just emergency you know there are times where you you didn't see something you walk into work if for those of you who work and it's brad's you know 10 year anniversary at work or brad just got a promotion so you know brenda comes in with the cake puts it down and you're like oh geez you know and everyone's like come on carl you gotta have this cake <laughs> Come on, man. Well, at least you have that one in your pocket to be like, okay, if anything happens, if I'm stuck somewhere, I can have a guilt-free without, without, you know, whatever. But here's the thing. Don't, that, if you don't use that fourth one, you can't, it can't uh, roll over to the next month. You're not rolling over cheat meals. Yes. <laughs> no rollovers. Only four. That's it. <laughs> You're harsh. Okay, I got a couple <laughs> of questions coming in on the chat here. Please, so please. the question is, can I work on bodybuilding training immediately after cardio? No, you would do the flip side. You would bodybuild first because you're, uh, you know, you don't, you want to come in when you're doing bodybuilding style workouts or strength training workouts, you want to have as much energy as possible, right? You don't want to be fatigued during that time. So you want to make sure that that's, that's to the forefront because again, muscle is very, very important. It's more important than your cardio, specifically if you're bodybuilding, right? It's way more important than cardio. You want to build that muscle. You want to get strong. You want to, you know, ensure that you're breaking down the muscle so that you can recover after. Mm -hmm. If you're doing cardio and, and, um, fatiguing yourself before the whole goal that you just mentioned, you said, my goal is bodybuilding, right? I want bodybuilding. So that is your number one focus. That's what you start with. Cardio, you can do anytime, right? Cardio can do 
anytime, right? You can you can go for walks, you can do sprints, you can do burpees, you know what I mean? But it's the it's the it's the real work of bodybuilding work because it takes a long time to build muscle. It takes six, nine, twelve months to build real solid, hard, lean muscle. So you gotta put the time and work into it, which means that has to be your number one focus. Not mm -hmm. saying you don't do cardio, you just do that afterwards. Got it. And another question in the chat is, what kind of program would you recommend for someone who is fit and over, for a woman who's fit and over 70? Whoa, nice. I like that one. Um, I would just recommend, uh, you know, three metabolic workouts, uh, you know, depending on how fit you are. Um, you know, I would still use a bit of resistance training for sure, because as you're getting older, again, sarcopenia, bones are getting weaker. So you really have to make sure that, you know, you're still it's not just walking or running, but you have to do all that auxiliary work, you know, moving on all planes of motion. So I would, again, do like a metabolic workout program. It doesn't have to be 60 seconds work followed by 15 seconds rest. It could be circuits where you're doing like 10 reps each exercise, one after the other. But I would keep it to those type of workouts because that keeps that your heart rate up. Um, again, strengthening the heart, right? As we get older, there's there's a lot of things that, that we need to, to focus more on heart. we got to focus on muscles. Um, we got to focus on just making sure that we can move in all directions. But I would do that maybe three times a week. And then again, the other thing is recovery, right? So doing those auxiliary stuff like yoga, because the worst thing is, as we get older, it's so funny. I talked um, to this about my wife. As I'm getting older, it's not about me looking jacked and ripped and big. It's more about not getting injured. Like that is the worst. If you, you, you do, it's everything to not be injured or not have like shoulder problems. So that's why recovery, uh, specifically, you know, over 40, 50, 60, 70 is just as important, right? Do those, do those other auxiliary stuff, mobility work or yoga. I, I also, I'm keep bringing up yoga because that's, mm -hmm. to me, that's like, an amazing, um, you know, uh, t type of exercise you can do, amazing routine that you can do that will help you strengthen, more flexible, more mobile, so that you can last a lot longer. But yeah, I would, I would definitely keep the weights for sure. Um, some type of resistance training, but not like buys and tries and, you know, pull downs and machines. You know, dumbbells are the best because it's going to be able to, you're going to hit more of the muscle. But that being saying, as you're getting older, it may be a little bit tougher to move from, you know, on different planes of motion. So that's where you may want to implement machines, but there's no machines right now. So right. You know, adding dumbbells and moving, you know, using a metabolic training program. Makes that's sense. Awesome. And what about what time of day should you work out? Morning, afternoon, after work? Yeah, this is huge. Um, anytime, anytime. Okay. <laughs> Just get it in. There's no good or bad time. So um, I get that question all the time. It's a great question because people want to because people want them to know when is the best time for me to maximize the work I'm putting in. I totally understand that question. It is any time. There are days when I work out first thing in the morning. There are days when I work out at twelve. There's days when I work out at three. There's days when I work out at ten. Like tomorrow, I'll be working out late at night. We'll be doing shooting workout videos late at night. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is what you put into your body after you work out. That's what matters. So it doesn't matter the time of day you work out, but the goal here is to work out before you eat. Because what you want to do is after you work out, your body's going to be your body's going to be um, uh, 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 craving glycogen, craving carbs, craving nutrition, so that you can recover, so you can keep the metabolism going, so you continue to burn, so that um, your protein you go, goes to the muscle, so that the muscles that you broke down can start to recover. So you always want to ensure that you eat after you work out, and depending on what type of workout, again, I, I'm, I'm a big metabolic person, so short um, metabolic style workouts. When I say metabolic, everyone, I mean high intensity, but don't get scared. I'm not talking about going crazy, depending on what level you're on. But those are the greatest workouts because, again, you burn calories during and after. But after those workouts, your body's craving glycogen because you've just, uh, you've just uh, you know, deplenished all your body of glycogen stores. Glycogen is sugars and carbs and, and what your body uses energy. But when you don't have any glycogen, what happens is, um, sorry, let me just turn that off. What happens is your body goes, okay, uh, funk, I'm waiting for you to give me my carbs. I'm waiting for you to give me my proteins and all the great nu nutrients that I need. Once you replenish, your body goes, awesome. You've given me carbs, great. I'm going to replenish my glycogen stores. 
which means let's metabolize and burn all that fat, which means the protein that I get, let's put it to the muscles, which means all the vegetables and fruits, let's get the micronutrients that we're going to be putting into our body. So mm -hmm. it's not as much as when you work out, it's just making sure that you work out before you eat so you can replenish your body and help your body recover and continue to metabolize um, after your workout. Perfect. So as a closing thought, what would you say to that person who's having a hard time even getting motivated just to work out in general? Yeah. So you know what? Motivation is tough right now. And I totally understand it. And one of the biggest things that people have problems with getting motivated is not having a plan. Like that's key. Like you have to have a plan specifically during this time. And specifically when, you know, we're outside of our comfort zone right now. You know, it's funny outside of our comfort zone and we're being in our house. That's really, <laughs> it should be our comfort zone. But for a lot of people, this is outside of our comfort zone. This is isolation. We don't want to be isolated. So the number one thing I would do is get a plan. Look online for a workout program that gives you great follow along workouts. You want follow along workouts. So all you have to do is click play and then you just work out a good nutrition plan. That's balanced, not keto, not paleo, not these restrictive diets, not low carb, no, not high carb, because you always want a diet that's going to be sustainable, that you can continue to eat the same way for years to come. You can't continue to eat that way with those restrictive diets and continue to get good results. So a nice balanced diet, um, a good workout program, a program that's got good support, and a program that's got a community, a good Facebook community where you can hang out and be around and get support from people who are on the same program, same like workout program and the same goals that you have, which is getting healthy. But, but it does start with a plan because once you have a plan, then it's easier to go, okay, now I can start focusing on implementing this plan as opposed to like, okay, hmm, I don't know what I'm going to do today. Oh, I see that Peloton bike there, but <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm gonna have this instead. So get a plan, definitely. If you once you have a plan, then it's gonna then you're gonna get the habit. You're gonna have a habit. You're gonna get consistency, and then uh, next thing you know, it's gonna be your lifestyle, which is what we want. We want a healthy lifestyle, and this is the time right now when we're at home isolated and, and uh, forced into isolation, this is the perfect time. I'm telling you right now, this is the time for you to get back to, go back to work with a six pack, looking the best people are be like, who are you? I didn't know you hired somebody new. No, it's me, man, it's me. I just got shredded, baby. I got shredded. <laughs> nice. That's a good plan. That's a great goal. Are there any other questions out there before we wrap things up? Yes, I have a question for Mark. Yes. Uh, cardio. I know you didn't talk a lot about cardio. Yes, I I've did. Got weights, I've got weights in my basement I can use. But the one thing I miss from not going to the gym is how do I get that cardio workout? I mean, I go for long walks from time to time. Yes. Depending on what's happening outside, I mean, I might not be able to go on that walk. Well, how can I replicate the cardio drill at home? Great question. So those metabolic workouts that I'm talking about where you move from one exercise to the other for time, that's your cardio. That is, okay. that is going to help you burn calories during and after. That's going to help you um, uh, strengthen your heart, right? So one day you may do just body weight exercises that you're moving from one exercise to the other. So maybe you do 30 seconds of one exercise, 15 seconds rest, 30 seconds of one. So you're not getting enough time to fully recover, but you're, you're continuously going. You're going to be sweating, believe me, you're going to be out of breath. Um, and then maybe on the second day you do more of what you're used to doing with the weights. And then on the third day, you go back to that cardio uh, or metabolic training because that is your cardio. That is yeah. probably the, that is the best, um, the, the most effective cardio. Because like I said before, you're not just burning calories during, but you're going to continue to burn after. It is tough. It is challenging, but you will get better results using gotcha. that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we close off? David, anything else? No, nothing else. Um, that was very inspirational, Mark. I loved it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and I like your vow to be healthy because the thing is, unless we are healthy, there's nothing else we can do. We can't enjoy anything else unless we've got our health. So mm -hmm. Health is absolutely number one. Absolutely, for sure. Well, thanks. And by the way, and by the way Develle, yes. uh, somewhere I've read, the, uh, uh, burpee is the best exercise you can do. <laughs> the good guy. I hate <laughs> I just can't stand I love you, David. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. Funk, thank you so much for joining us. This has been awesome. 
It's kind of made me realize I should do yoga tomorrow and I shouldn't. Uh, well, actually, no, I took today off. So actually, I can go back to my HIIT training tomorrow before I go to a yoga class. But And for those of you who are, have a little money to spend and, um, you know, can, can have a little extra money, then you definitely want to get that Peloton in there. Um, <laughs> I just got one today. Um, and yeah, we're not going to, it's not my number one piece of equipment, but, uh, I'm not, a, I, I don't like running. It's hard on my knees, um, as I get older. So I have to find ways to get sprint training in. And, uh, I used to go to the gym and use the treadmill for sprint training or use the bike for sprint training. When I talk about sprint training, I'm talking about going like, you know, 30 seconds, really, really, really fast. And then followed by 30 seconds, really, really slow. And then yeah. going either on the bike or on the treadmill. Well, now I don't have that. And uh, I don't want to be running on the on the concrete, specifically at my age, because again, it's very hard for me to recover in my knees. So um, we bit the bullet, got the Peloton, and um, you know we'll we'll see how that works. Nice. See, that's when I use my skipping rope. So I've got a skipping rope, and that's what I take with me when I go on vacation. It's a great weight, and I know I can skip no matter where. Other than that, I love to run on the trail by my house. But you're, you're a runner. You're good. You're good. You're yeah. For some reason, fifty years old, you're still cr- you're fifty, right? Yeah, I'm a, in, almost, almost. In a month. <laughs> People who are watching this right now, this right here, she is the she's the real, unbelievable. Un- Thank you. Your story alone is incredible. I mean, Thank that's a whole other topic. Your story alone, your comeback, and and I know. I guess that is a whole other topic. But I guess uh, the shortest version is is that I was hit by a car back in 1998. I think it was. Uh-huh. Uh-huh road two o'clock in the morning with my friends in the middle of the night and you know fractured two vertebrae in my neck and two vertebrae in my back um had blood coming out of my head tore ligaments in my knee got rushed to the hospital you know when i was in the hospital basically i I was there for four days then at the end of four days the physiotherapist got me to go to the edge of my bed and i had to take four steps and i came back from those four steps and i just broke out and sweat uh because i hadn't walked in so long. And by this point now, they were actually going to have to reteach me how to walk. So once they did that, I started, you know, walking with uh, a walker with wheels. That was my big goal. Walk around the hospital with a walker with wheels. And at the time I'd spoken to my aunt, who's a physiotherapist in New York City on the phone. And she said, once they teach you to walk, get up every five, every, every hour for five minutes and just walk around just to make sure that your muscles don't atrophy. So I just, I listened to that advice big time and uh, I really kind of followed that. So, you know, I graduated to a walker without wheels, you know, then I got transported to a rehab hospital and then I graduated to walking with crutches and uh, then going to a, 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 with a cane. And so that's kind of how I went through my progression. And I remember one of my friends brought me uh, the Rocky trilogy to my hospital bed and I started watching it and it, it really did help me get motivated. Because I was like, Rocky, right? Like, I was like, I got to do this. You know, you kind of have that soundtrack playing in your background of, yeah, you know what? I, I got to do this. Just like Rocky, I'm going to keep going. And then I got released from the rehab hospital and I worked with a physiotherapist. And literally it was three, four times a week, two and a half hours each day. She basically said, okay, you're going to, once she, you know, we were, I was walking normally, I had to walk one minute, run one minute. And she said, for the next week, do that. The following week, run two minutes, walk one minute. And after that, she said, run three minutes. Then the following week was four, then five. And she said, once you can run five minutes and walk one minute, then you can run consecutively for 15 minutes. So I did that. And then every week I kept going to 15 minutes, to 20 minutes, to 25 minutes. And then one day, one of my friends said, hey, would you do the the half marathon program with me at the running room? And I was just like, are you kidding me? Anyway, somehow I decided, sure, what the hell. She actually ended up dropping out, but I stuck with it. So I did a half marathon and just got a good camaraderie with a number of runners. Never really wanted to do a marathon, but all of them were progressing to the marathon state. And I thought, oh, well, I'll just run with them for a little bit longer. And when it gets to be too much, I'll just stop. Well, then I never stopped. So then I ran the Niagara Falls Marathon and I ran the New York Marathon. And, uh, you know, it just kept going. So, you know, to your point earlier about health is everything. Mm-hmm. And so that's so important to me. It's one of the reasons why I'm so committed to making sure I do work out four or five times a week, because I know that chance was taken away from me at some point. So it's really important to be able to do that. 
Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So, so inspiring. I thought about that when, uh, when you came to see me in the hospital, I thought about like, shit, man, this girl got smashed by a car. So I'm going to get back <laughs> to the hospital and start, right? Like literally the next week I was, a week later I was in the, you know, working out in the wall. It was, it was, you know, moving around as much as I could. Right. My lungs were killing me, but I still, you know, tried to force my lungs to, to get better quicker and faster. Right. So it was really the recovery time is key, right? When you're, that's the time when you really have to push yourself. I know we're on, on a whole other topic, but, but yeah, it's the baby steps, right? Like that's all it is. And same thing for someone who doesn't work out or wants to work out and same thing with recovering from a huge accident. It's just baby steps little by little. It sort of builds on something else to let you keep going. Yeah. So we, you know, for those, for men out there who are looking for a program, I'm going to plug my over 40 alpha.com yeah. over 40 alpha.com. It's a program for men, 40, 50, 60, 70 and beyond. There's 2,500 uh, men right now who support each other, who've had incredible results, you know, from Warwick who lost 180 pounds, three, 300 pounds to 180 ripped when he started he was 300 pounds. Um, you know, we've got Every day, I just posted a, a you know a picture of somebody who lost you know a whole bunch of weight. He's fifty years old. So again, but it's all about baby steps, right? We start with baby steps. We start you know with laying the foundation of your lifestyle, and then um, you know you keep going. The good thing is I'm coaching every week, so I answer your questions, and you have support of thousands of men all over the world who are all on the same you know um, same journey of boosting testosterone naturally so you can lose weight burn fat be healthy and be a be the alpha male that you you you're put on this earth to be right be the protector the provider and the procreator um and and be as healthy as you can for you your family for your kids uh, for your grandkids because you know as we get older we become the patriarchs whether we want to or not of our family and we have to be healthy and in, in that body and in the mind because when stuff like this happens your family looks to you and if you're sick or you can't do anything or you're unhealthy it's like, well, what's dad going to do? Like, that's not going to do anything. Let's, let's ask mom. She'll help us. You know, like, you know, it's just, you just want to be as healthy as you can. And so sure. this teaches you not just about health, but also about regaining your manhood and regaining that, you know. Um, yeah. So, and we also have one for women. I'll, I'll give that, I'll send that link off as well. I don't know the, off the top of my head because it's new. Okay, but, sounds uh, good. New program for women, so it's, <laughs> I don't know. What them. But our men's program, <laughs> over40alpha.com. Get on it. There you go. Awesome. Well, thank you. Free. 60 days free, by the way. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Deville. Thanks, Funk, for joining us. Bye, David. Thanks, everyone, today. Bye. Talk to you later. Thank you so much, Deville. Thanks, everyone, for coming and listening. Bye.